Hello everyone. Today I'm very excited to present our research paper titled An Investigation of Identity Account Inconsistency in Single Sign-On. My name is Guanan, and this is a joint work with my PhD committee member Dr. Gao at the University of Delaware and my advisor Dr. Wang at Virginia Tech. Before I go into the technical details about our work, I would like to start this presentation with an analogy of how single sign-on is used in real world. I assume that many of us have at least one government-issued ID. It may contain many information such as ID number, our name, gender, date of birth, and even our addresses. With this identification, we could receive many services and privileges from business and our society. For example, we may be allowed to drive a car in a specific country or region. We can book flights, reserve hotel rooms, we can get education, open bank accounts, etc. From our perspective as the identity owner and user, we can simply walk into an agency or business, show our ID, and receive the corresponding service. The entire flow is very simple. On the other hand, from the service provider's perspective, things may get a little bit complicated. For example, Alice goes to the bank to access her bank account, and she shows her ID to the bank. In normal operation, the bank checks Alice's ID and sees that her ID number is 1112222333. The bank finds Alice's banking account by searching for an account in their system with the same ID number. This procedure ensures that if another person, Bob, goes to the same bank with his ID, he cannot access the same account. The entire process is considered secure based on the assumption that the ID number is unique and one specific ID number can only be used by one person. But what happens if we break this assumption? What if the bank uses address to find banking account? In this scenario, when Alice goes to the bank, the bank sees that Alice lives in one example road and find the corresponding banking account, which happens to be Alice's account. Later, Alice moves out of her house and Bob moves in. He changed the address of his ID to be one example road. Then, if Bob goes to the same bank, he should also be able to access Alice's account simply because the bank uses the address instead of ID number to match banking account. This creates a huge security risk which should never happen in the real banking system. However, in this work, we demonstrate that similar scenario could occur in SSO authentication scheme, which could potentially lead to user account compromises. In SSO authentication, there are three parties involved, namely end user, service provider, and identity provider. First, the end user visits service providers such as Dropbox or eBay and initializes the authentication process. The SP redirects end user to identity provider like Google and asks the end user to log in. Upon successfully logged in, the end user receives the identity issued by the IDP and sends it back to the service provider. The SP searches its database for a user account that matches the provided identity and grants user to access the account. In order to demonstrate the vulnerability in SSO, first we show how user accounts are registered and stored. Currently, there are two ways for user accounts to be registered. In the first case, Bob registers his account using SSO with ID token 1. In the token, it contains Bob's user ID 1112222333 and email address bob at example.com, which are stored in the sub and email field of the token. An account B is created according to the identity token, which contains the same sub and email value. Move on to the second case in which Alice registers her account through the SP's website no single sign-on is involved. Once the account is registered, an account A is stored in the SP's database with Alice's email address only. Since there's no SSO involved, the subfield of the account, which represents the user ID of the SSO identity, contains an empty value. 
Now comes to the SSO authentication part. First, let's start with Bob again. If Bob tries to authenticate himself using ID token 1, which is the same token he used when registering the account, the service provider should allow Bob to access account B because the sub and email field in the token 1 match the information in account B. This is perfectly fine because Bob gains access to his own account. In our work, we refer this scenario as case 1. But what if Bob decides that he wants to change his email address to alice at example.com? In this time, Bob would use ID token 2 for authentication. Because the service provider does not know this change, there could be two completely different cases occur. In case 2, the service provider sees that the subfield of token 2 matches the same value in account B. Therefore, it grants Bob to access account B. Although this case is not ideal, it is still valid because Bob is the owner of account B. In case 3, the service provider realizes that the email address in token 2 is the same as in account A. Therefore, the service provider might allow Bob to access account A simply because the email address is the same. This is dangerous because now Bob compromises Alice's account. It seems that this case doesn't make sense like who would ever do this, but our work indicates that a large number of service providers are actually allowing this to happen. Finally, our work reveals another troubling case which is shown in case 4. In this case, another person, Charlie, tries to authenticate himself with ID token 3. This token contains Charlie's user ID, which is 333222111, and email address bob at example.com. The service provider receives token 3 and realizes that there's no account with a matching subfield, but account B has the same email address as token 3. In this case, the service provider may allow Charlie to access Bob's account. This is also wrong. So to summarize, the root cause of such a security threat is that the information contained in user identity and online account are inconsistent. Hence, we call it identity account inconsistency threat. Information changes on the identity provider's side, especially the change or reuse of email address, are not reflected on the service provider's system. And service providers grant users to access accounts based on the modifiable or reusable information. This inconsistency threat can be found in IDPs and SPs adopting both OAuth and SAML protocols. It does not require attackers to have advanced technical skills in order to compromise other people's account by exploiting this threat. To further investigate the scale of this threat, we focus on two perspectives. First, we would like to know how many identity providers allow change or reuse of email address. Second, how many service providers allow login with matching email address. We realize that many email providers offer free SSO service as identity provider. So to answer the first question, we dig deeper into the account management of email providers. We investigate popular email providers and find that for public email account, many email providers does not allow users to change their email addresses. However, if for some reason an address is deleted, Hotmail, Yahoo, and QQ may allow any user to reclaim it in a later time. For business account, business administrators have more control over the email address. All email providers allow admins to change and delete email address. Also, these email address can be reassigned to other people. Furthermore, since the pricing for business email is based on the number of active users, it encourages business admins to delete unused email addresses as often as possible, especially for business with tight budget. This 
potentially increase the possibility of email address reuse. We also investigate the account management policy adopted by 50 universities. We find that 32 universities allow students to change their email address by modifying their net ID. 14 universities immediately delete students' email address right after they graduate from the school. Two universities keep their email address as long as these emails are active. In total, we find that 68% of universities adopt account management policies that are vulnerable to the inconsistency threat. To understand how the account matching process works on the SP side, we investigate 100 service providers which are randomly selected from top Alexa 1000 websites. We streamline our experiment procedure into a single graph shown in this slide. First, we examine whether SP allows user to log into an account with an empty user ID and a matching email address. This corresponds to case 3 of the SSO authentication graph that we shown previously. Second, we check case 2 in which we attempt to log into an account with matching email user ID, matching user ID but different email address. Finally, for case 4, we examine if SP allows user to log in with a matching email address but different user ID. The result indicates that within 100 service providers that we investigate, only 20 SPs are immune to the inconsistency threat. These cases are highlighted in the table. The rest 80 SPs are vulnerable, which means that attackers can easily compromise users' account in these systems simply by exploiting the threat. For ethical consideration, we have disclosed this security threat to the affected SPs. So far, we have received positive feedbacks, and many of them are actively working on proper solutions. The identity account inconsistency threat involves many parties. Therefore, fully addressing the threat might require coordination across multiple systems. The defense practice proposed in our work are primitive and preliminary. We believe that the technical team of the affected SPs should enforce appropriate defense that best fit their system architecture and business needs. From the end user's perspective, the first practice that we could do is to use identity that we could maintain for a long period of time, preferably lifelong. This ensures that the identity itself, as well as all other information along with the identity, do not get expired or reassigned to others. Second, end users should pay extra attention to any modification or deletion of our identity. Also, we need to erase our private data and manually terminate all associated accounts before the modification or deletion take place. On the SP side, users should be allowed to access online accounts only with matching user ID. SPs should also update user attributions if the information provided in the identity does not agree with the online account. From the IDP side, a simple and straightforward way of mitigating this threat is to prevent user to change or reuse email addresses. A few takeaways from our work. We review that the identity account inconsistency threat exists and can be exploited to compromise user accounts. We show that majority of identity providers allow user to change or reuse email addresses and 80% of the popular service providers are vulnerable to such a threat. End users, IDPs, and SPs should all be aware of this threat and take proper precautions and defenses as needed. With that, if you have further questions, feel free to contact me via email. Thank you for listening.